hello friends welcome to today's video so today we'll be discussing an important topic which is the electronic devices which is a part of the physics syllabus which is common for both atc as well as the airport operations junior executive airport authority of india so electronic devices are the one in which the controlled flow of electrons is there you know this is the key term electrons will be flowing in metal and also in other devices but then the control is not there but the important feature of the electron devices is that they have a controlled flow of electron so this is the key term so coming to the history of first we'll be discussing a brief history of the electronic devices and then we'll be moving with the current electronic devices so starting with in the initial days in 1900th century vacuum tubes used to be there in that cathode will be there and an anode will be there and once you apply a temperature to the cathode then electrons from this cathode will go and will be collected in the anode so this flow of electrons will actually provide the conduction and then the conduction was provided and the current used to generate so this is how the vacuum tubes were used the problem with, with these devices is first was that the current was only flowing from the i mean the electrons were only flowing from the cathode to anode so only one direction flow was there and these were very heavy they used to consume high power they also operated at a very high voltages of around 100 volts they had a limited life and also low reliability so what happened then many researches were conducted by the researchers and then somewhere around during 1930s some of the scientists they found a devices which are the solid state devices so they seen that if the semiconductor devices if they two are if two devices are connected or manufactured such that we can they can they were able to achieve the control they were able to control the number of the electrons that were flowing and also the direction of flow of charge carriers which you can say electron or holes so they were able to control the number of electrons they were able to control the direction and also they were able to do many things with these devices so they did more research so this was the beginning of the semiconductor devices the advantages which they provided over the vacuum tubes are these are light in weight even with the application of small or small heat or small applied voltage they used to function like vacuum tubes were operating at 100 volts but these devices were able to operate at less than 100 volts and they were very easy also so and also the possibility of changing the number of mobile charges in the semiconductor was able to achieve in the semiconductor devices so then so what exactly is the semiconductor you know semiconductor as i have said in the solid state devices semiconductors are solid state devices only so they offer the same advantages they are small in size low, low power operate at a low voltages they have a long life and high reliability so what is actually semiconductor devices you know we have metals we have semiconductors and we have insulators so what is the difference you know metal once you apply the voltage the current will flow due to the flow of electrons so these metals are have a high conductivity the problem with the metals is that we don't have a control over the number of electrons that were able to flow so coming to semiconductor devices flow of electrons can be achieved with the application of slow i mean small voltages and also you know the control of electrons or the control of the charge carriers you can say was able to achieve in the semiconductors whereas in the insulators even the application of voltage no conduction was possible no conduction is possible so these three devices are basically divided based on the conductivity metals are the highly conductive with semi semiconductors in between and insulators with the lowest conductivity you know conductivity sigma and resistivity are related by rho equal to 1 by sigma where sigma is the conductivity and rho is the resistivity the low is the resistivity the more current can be easily flown with the help of the application of voltage you know you know v is equal to ir 
so the low is the resistance with the application small voltage high current can be achieved so this was the basic fundamental difference between these so they found that the semiconductor devices which are more suitable are the silicon and germanium so these are the compounds in the <coughs> periodic table so during the research they found that these two devices are very good for the manufacturing of semiconductor devices so if we start with the silicon the silicon has a basically a crystalline structure it is a crystal structure so the basic the three dimensional diagram of a silicon will be like this you know each electron is shared by another four electrons so these sharing is nothing but a covalent bond or in or the valence bond so what happens is you know because the sharing of the electrons is there so what happens is in the in the atom because of the sharing and because of these charges so there will be two energy bands are formed so one is a valence band and other is a conduction band so what happens is a valence band is one in which electrons are always there and it is filled whereas conduction band is energy state where electrons might be filled or may not be filled for the conduction to be there ec means electrons has to be there in the conduction band whereas valence band electron does not contribute then to the conduction of electricity so this is the basic difference and what what it is found is there is a certain amount of energy gap that is there between a valence band and the conduction band for a silicon or a germanium so which is known as the energy gap and it is represented using eg as i have said so eg in metals is found to be zero because what happens is in ec and ev in metals they are overlapping with each other so since overlapping with each other so electrons are always there in the conduction band so what happens is they will the current the current will flow easily even with the application of small voltages whereas for insulator eg is greater than 3 3 electron volt so this achieving 3 electron volt is very difficult so these were categorized as insulators so now for the for the semiconductor the eg is less than 3 and greater than 0 so with the application of small voltages also this energy band the electrons can be from flown from the valence band to the conduction band so now we have the control over the transfer of electrons from ev to ec with the application of voltage so this uh, this voltage is in our control so based on the voltage the transfer of electrons can happen or the charge carriers can happen and then the current flow can be controlled so this was able to achieve so which is the basic for the electronic devices so the definition of energy band is the gap between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band next if you take a pure silicon as we have said in as we have discussed in the above lattice structure which is crystalline so when you take a pure silicon or germanium what happens is the number of electrons and holes are equal okay first let's, let me tell you what a hole actually is so you know as i have told you one electron is being shared by the four four other electrons so what happens is even if you apply a small voltage or a small temperature change you know temperature is energy and also voltage is energy so even at a room temperature or some even if, even with the application of small voltage the electrons will flow from this to this so what happens is then with the transfer of electron there will be a small hole created i mean the absence of electron is a hole you can see the neighborhood from which the free electron with charge electron has a charge minus q has come out and leaves a vacancy with a charge effective charge plus q so hole has a charge of plus q and electron is a minus q 
so this vacancy with effective positive electronic charge is called a hole so this let's say if this electron has gone out from here then this vacancy is charge of plus q and then this is a hole so this is happening because of the application of a small temperature or the voltage which is basically an energy so in semiconductor what happens is both the electron and hole they both contribute for the flow of electricity electrons as we know they have a charge of minus q and hole a charge of plus q so in semiconductor devices both these electrons and holes contribute to electricity whereas in metals only electrons is there so this is the key difference between a semiconductor and a metal also so now that we have understood what a hole is so what happens is that a room temperature the number of electrons and holes number of electrons and the number of holes in an intrinsic semiconductor are equal so so this is one important point to remember so semiconductor possess a unique property in which apart from hole electrons also move so as i have said in the above with application of temperature or voltage electrons are able to move so similarly holes which are created they also tend to move so this is one more difference so at a room temperature or with a normal semiconductor device the number of holes is equal to the number of holes any equal to nh so this pure semi pure silicon or germanium was not useful because they were not able to control the flow of electrons so what they did is they did some small research and then they came out with a new idea which we'll be discussing now so if you see conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor is a pure semiconductor which you can say pure silicon or germanium depends on its temperature but its room temperature is conductivity is very low as i have said the pure silicon at a low temperature the conductivity is very low because the number of holes is equal to number of electrons so what happened is then they found that to improve their conductivity they can use a method called doping so doping is basically a process of adding some impurities to the existing crystalline structure so let's say this is a pure silicon and what pure silicon or germanium then if you add some other atoms which are other other compounds then what happens is the atomic structure of this will change and so this process is known as a doping so what we are doing is we are adding some other compounds to the existing compound to the atomic structure so this process is known as doping so this is important so the addition of making use of addition of impurities you know these external compounds which we are adding are are known as impurities so we are making a pure silicon or germanium as impure by adding the other compound so the, these compounds are called impurities and the entire process of adding this is a doping so what are these compounds you know so, and these are also called as dopants the other compounds the other name is the dopants so there are two types of dopants that are used in doping the silicon or germanium so depending on the compound they were categorized into two one is a pentavalent and a trivalent pentavalent is one in which each electron is shared by five other electrons so then those were called n type and in which they were each electron is shared by three those were called as a valency and where one was p type so this is the key term to remember so now we have to start manufacturing the semiconductor devices so this is a pure silicon now we have to make n type semiconductor or we have to make p type semiconductor by doping so if you are adding the n type impurities so n type impurities are arsenic antimony and phosphorus since these are having the five valence electrons so when an atom of plus 5 valence electron occupies a position of an atom in the crystal lattice four of its electron are four silicon while the fifth remains the free so these are when these atoms when these compounds are added to a pure silicon or germanium then this 
silicon will be known as n type semiconductor so similarly for the p type semiconductor to be manufactured the silicon or germanium has to be added with this three valence electron which is the trivalent like indium boron and aluminium so when these are added to this silicon then this will become a p type semiconductor so now we have understood the difference between an n type and a p type n type is one in which a five valence electrons compound is added that is arsenic antimony bismuth and p type is the one in which three valence electrons are added which is the indium boron and aluminium so the key difference is the n type semiconductor the majority carriers now coming to the carriers you know since both electron and hole both are contributing to the current so these are the charge carriers in a semiconductor so now in a semiconductor both of these are doing so now what happens is in a n type semiconductor more number of electrons are contributing to the current whereas in a p type holes are contributing more so this is the fundamental difference in between n type and a p type so the majority charge carriers are the electrons in n type and in holes majority charge carriers are p type carriers so now we have two semiconductor so now we have two compounds which is a silicon with a n type and a silicon with a p type so now what will happen if we club these two and manufacture them in lab with the n type and p type and there is a small overlapping between these two then what will happen is this overlapping is a junction so if we are able to manufacture in the lab so this is a basically a pn junction diode so this silicon with a p type and n type when they are clubbed or manufactured like this then this is a pn junction diode so this is a basic basis for the formation of the pn junction diode so what happens is in pn junction diode with the application of external voltage we can control the flow of current in a pn diode current will flow in one direction and also the charge carriers can be varied so we'll be discussing in further classes since this is my first video on this topic if you have liked the video you can just comment your ideas on the video or if you want me to make the videos shorter or longer you can tell me so that i will do them accordingly and if you want to know any other topics which you want me to make videos on please let me know in the comment so that i will teach only those topics so if you have liked the video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos and thank you for watching